Hello, friends. Rob Brown here. Um, it's been a crazy few weeks, um, as I don't even need to say when it comes to everything that's going on in this world as we talk about the coronavirus, um, the impact on the financial markets, and then the overall spill out on the economy. And uh, during crazy times like this, during turbulent times like this, I think it's important to act as a leader, as I would encourage each of you to do in your businesses, with your team, and with your clients, to make sure that the message that you're sending is one that resonates, one that sticks, one that makes a difference to the people uh, that you talk to. So I'm putting together this very short video to share some additional ideas that have been flavored by what's been going on around me. So let me um, take a minute here and pull up my uh, screen so I can share that with you um, right now. I'm, I'm calling this presentation, uh, Stay Safe, Choose Happiness, Help Others. Um, and I've given uh, lots of presentations over the years and I can uh, say with certainty that I've never given a presentation with this uh, topic uh, before, this combination of topics. Um, but the reason that I did it is that one of the first things that I saw when I looked at my email this morning was a headline that said, don't panic. There have been 13 bull and bear markets since World War II. Well, although I agree with the idea of not panicking, uh, this overly simplistic uh, way of giving advice uh, from someone who I don't even know if they've been through markets like this before seems a bit naive to me. It's hard to tell people, don't panic, just don't panic. Because there are some people who are panicking uh, no matter what happens. So I think you have to go deeper. You can't be uh, so simple in the way that you talk about what's going on today because the panic that they may be feeling may have less to do with what's going on in their accounts, what's going on in the markets, and more to do what's going on in their head and their hearts and trying to make those things balance. Uh, to kind of share this point with you, um, I got uh, another email this morning uh, from someone that I communicate with regularly who said, right now my focus is on surviving the mayhem that is about to be unleashed on us in the coming weeks. Well, to be honest with you, I don't know what's going to happen in the coming weeks. I don't think any of us do. Uh, the situation that we're going through now, like the situations that may have surrounded many of those uh, turns in bull markets into bear markets, is unprecedented. Each one is slightly different. Um, but I don't believe that worrying about mayhem that's going to be unleashed is the right way to approach things. I think that takes you off your game. You're less helpful to the people that you need to serve. And as I was thinking about this, um, I was recalling a quote um, that I actually couldn't quite remember, uh, but when I went back and looked at it, it uh, looked for it, I, I was able to, to look it up because, you know, I like to be an optimist. And um, as I've watched the news and talked to people over the course um, of the last couple of weeks, um, I felt out of place, like being optimistic wasn't a good thing. I, I wanted to find ways uh, to help people, and I found that difficult to do. And then I saw this quote again. I looked for this quote, and it says, I always like to be on the optimistic side of life, but I am realistic enough to know that life is a complex matter. And I don't think it's an understatement to say that we're living through complex times right now. So we have to be realistic. So how do we deal with this as financial professionals in our businesses? How do we deal with this as leaders in our community? I think it comes down to staying safe, encouraging others to stay safe, choosing happiness, and helping others. 
So let me look at a very practical piece of advice um, that I give as it relates to this idea uh, to my clients. Um, I've received several emails over the last couple of weeks from my clients who have asked me this, a question like this. They're saying, you know, Rob, I'm curious as to your thoughts about sending out another email or blog like I've done the last two week, weeks. Part of me thinks it's not necessary because I don't know how much more there is to say. The other part says that it can be reassuring for everyone to hear that I'm here and available if they need me, as well as to remind them that I can continue to work on their behalf. Please let me know what you think. And here's my answer. I don't think you can send too many messages. You can do too many videos or blogs for your clients and for your prospects but only do it if you can provide new information. You can allay concerns. You can let your audience know that you're available to talk one-to-one -one if they need you because getting a message that goes to a group may not satisfy them. You need to keep it short and simple. I think you need to tell stories and give examples. Not, don't always take it back to the market. And you also need to give common sense advice. And that's where, in my mind, encouraging people to stay safe, choose happiness, and to help others is a great message to deliver, whether you're, like me, a coach to financial advisors, helping other advisors, or you're an advisor working with your clients, some who may be panicking and thinking about mayhem, others who may be overly optimistic and not being careful enough, um, but, or more likely that big group in the middle that's just looking to your leadership, that's just looking for that good, simple advice uh, to keep them on track. So let me dive into this a little bit deeper. So the first idea I have, um, and we all have right now, is to stay safe. I mean, we hear it over and over and over again. Um, it doesn't matter who you're getting advice from who is really trying to help other people, they're saying, stay safe, stay safe. Um, they're talking about staying safe from a personal perspective, the simple things like washing your hands, avoiding crowds, uh, keeping your distance from people, stocking your shelves. And, I'm, and I know there are more, I know there are more, I know that I'm oversimplifying this, but I also don't think that I can add a lot of value here other than to say, take care of your personal safety. Don't take yourself for granted. You, somebody may need your help, and if you're not keeping yourself safe, you may not be able to help them when it's time to help them. I think there's also safety that we should be talking about from a financial perspective, especially as financial professionals who are helping other people with their investments in their financial plans. So as you talk about staying, stay, staying safe, you need to talk about trusting your plan, trusting that plan, only making changes when you're thinking about doing things in a disciplined way that is consistent with your plan. Encourage financial safety by encouraging your clients' reliance on you. Don't be afraid to hold your ground when it comes to keeping your clients on track with their plans and in their portfolios. Don't make short-term changes just to dissipate um, concerns that will not last for a long time. Stick to your discipline. Make sure your clients are relying on you um, as an expert. And also encourage your clients from a financial safety perspective to not take on other people's worries and concerns. They are not professionals, but other people could be coming to them for help. Uh, this may sound self-serving, but if you offer to serve your clients, fr family, friends, and colleagues, you could be helping your clients by taking away some of that burden that they're feeling as people are seeking financial security through them, and that in turn leads to an opportunity for you to serve other clients. 
So think about financial security from the standpoint of, an, of helping your clients trust in their plans, fix the plans of, uh, that you come across that aren't right, that, that need to be fixed. If you run into someone who is not working with you who needs help, only make disciplined decisions and encourage those disciplined decisions by encouraging your clients to rely on you and then don't allow your clients or don't uh, make sure your clients aren't taking on other people's worries. Help them do that. So those are my thoughts around staying safe. I'm sure there are others. But I just want to give you a sense of what safety should mean or could mean in an environment like this. Uh, the next thing I want you to do is I want you to choose happiness. Choose happiness. Whether we are um, down in the dumps, uh, whether we're worried, whether we're fearful, uh, whatever, whatever those emotions are that may be swimming through our heads right now, they are choices. And I think it always makes sense to choose happiness. Choose to be happy. Choose to pr put on um, a, a smiling face. It doesn't mean that you're not being realistic, but if you choose happiness, you're in a better position to be able to help other people. So think about it this way. Think about it from the standpoint of family and, from, and, and, and yourself. Um, you know, maybe there aren't, you know, like me, it's going to be terrible. I can't watch uh, Major League Baseball now. It's my, one of my favorite times of the year, but that's just a small thing. There are other things that I can do. Um, it doesn't mean I need to turn on, you know, Rachel Maddow or Sean Hannity and let them, you know, bash my brain with all of their negativity and get sucked in to the politics of the day. In fact, you know, unless you're getting ready to vote in one of the primaries, maybe the best thing to do is just kind of forget about the presidential elections. Um, they aren't coming up until November. Let things play out. Um, but but don't, don't swap those times that you might be engaged in other activities, like me watching baseball, doing things that keep you from choosing happiness. Play games, pull out some of your old board games. I know some of you do uh, games where you can play online with people uh, and in groups, play those games, have some fun, turn off the news. I got a great email or a great text from one of my daughters this morning. We're gonna have virtual dinner tonight. We're just gonna get on our cell phones, uh, turn on FaceTime, and we're gonna have dinner together even though uh, we're in four or three different locations. We're gonna have a virtual dinner. So have virtual dinners with your family, with your friends, if you can't get together. Um, do some things that really allow you um, to choose happiness, to have fun, um, and go to bed early. You know, there's some, there are many benefits to going to bed early. Um, spending time with your spouse, um, getting more rest. More rest lead means less stress. So choose happiness, play games, turn off the news, um, have some virtual dinners with your family, get more rest, you'll have less stress, It'll be easier to turn on that, that mode of happiness. I think you can turn on that mode of happiness with your clients too. Uh, maybe it won't be uh, quite the same as doing some things with your family, but um, I've, I've seen lots of, um, of great ideas from my clients, what they're doing with their clients. Um, I'm a big believer in having um, an online calendar where a client can come to your website and choose a time to speak with you. So, so build in some extra online office hours and let your clients know that those times are available. You may be able to help them be more happy as you continue to talk with them about the best way to navigate through these crazy times and stay focused on their plan. Um, I have two clients right now who are planning virtual workshops. Uh, one was already planning for a seminar later this week. Um, um, she is going to do that seminar on Zoom. So she's going to have a virtual seminar, virtual workshop. Uh, another client um, is actually doing what he's calling a fireside chat. Um, every uh, Monday evening um, throughout this period of crisis, he's going to have a fireside chat, an opportunity 
to talk about what's going on in the market, but also for clients to have an opportunity to ask questions and be reassured and work in group and community. So uh, a virtual workshop may be another way where you can choose happiness and really help your clients choose happiness too. I'm a huge believer in personal notes. So maybe this is a great time to send a note to your client, whether it's an email or a handwritten note, just letting them know that you're thinking about them. If you send a handwritten note or maybe even an e-card, it can be a little um, lighthearted in nature so that you're causing them to smile. You're helping them choose happiness. Another thing that I like to use is a video email. I use a service called BombBomb where you can create a video like this and send it to a big audience or you can send personal video messages. But these are simple ways, uh, simple tools that you can use to, to choose happiness yourself, to bring happiness and to bring happiness to others, your family, yourself, your clients, your friends. Think about it. Choose happiness. The other, uh, the other thing, the last thing that I want to talk about is helping others. Because the truth is, uh, when we help others, we live longer. Although this may not be a great word to be talking about today, it's contagious. We live longer. It's contagious. Helping others makes us happier. Helping others lowers blood pressure. And helping others gives us purpose and satisfaction. Um, helping others is, is, a, is a form of choosing happiness. So what can you do right now to help others? Well, I was just talking with a client less than two hours ago who's putting together a pay it forward campaign. She is actually going to send a video message to all of her clients, encouraging them to buy meals from local restaurants. So to, to, to support those local business owners who may be suffering uh, during, whose businesses may be suffering during these tough economic times, um, ha may help keep some of their uh, employees employed, but they're, they're going to buy meals through those local restaurants. Then they're going to have those local restaurants call the local food pantry, tell them how many meals they have, when they'll be available, so that somebody from the food pantry can either send people who need those meals to those restaurants to pick them up, or the food pantry will do it for them. It sounds a little bit complicated, but with just a few phone calls, she was actually able to create this pay it forward campaign. Um, I don't know about in your household, but I know that right now when we go to the grocery store, we're probably going a little bit more than we should. You buy extra cans of food if, if they're on the shelves, because some of the shelves are empty. I get that. But when you're buying those extra cans of food and you don't feel like you're, you're overly emptying the, uh, the shelves, maybe you buy a few extra cans of food and on your way home from the grocery store, drop them by the local uh, food shelter, the local food bank, because I bet their shelves are em empty. So that's a great way to help others. Uh, maybe if you've got some extra time on your hands, something that you could do is just clean your closet, you know, get into your closet, pull out those clothes uh, that you've been meaning to give to Goodwill or the or the disabled veterans for years and, and pull those together and, and actually give them away. Um, it's a great way to clean your house and um, do something for others at the same time. Don't forget to make your financial donations. Those charities that you support, your church, or the local charities, they still need your money. Uh, more likely than not, if you're listening to this video, um, you're in a, in a good situation financially. Don't forget to share that. Um, and then a last idea that I have, and, and, I, and, and to be completely honest with you, this is uh, something that I have not done, uh, but I hope to do if I can make it work. I participate in some small groups. Uh, for example, I lead a Bible study that's not going to be able to meet. Uh, I'm part of a, a prison ministry that's not going to be able to meet. Um, and I'm involved in some other things that won't be able to meet because of what's going on um, with the pandemic right now. What I'm going to do is because I use 
uh, I work virtual. I use uh, my, my Zoom meeting room all the time. I'm going to try to host some of those small groups, some of those uh, groups that I normally get together with and host them online so we can still continue to meet, share the valuable information and stories and ideas and, um, and, um, and prayer and whatever that we share with each other together. Um, but I think that's another way to help us is keep the groups going. Again, it's that leadership that comes into play that you have to have if you're a professional financial advisor helping other people achieve their goals. Um, I think it all comes down to being a light in darkness. Um, there's a great um, Psalm, Psalm 91 that goes, you who live in the shelter of the Most High, who abide in the shadow of the Almighty, will say to the Lord, my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I trust. For he will deliver you from the snare of the fowler, fowler and from the deadly pestilence. He will cover you with his pinions and under his wings you will find refuge. His faithfulness is a shield and buckler. Keeping that scripture, keeping that thought in mind, choosing to stay safe, Choosing happiness, choosing to help others is being a light in darkness. And I think that's what we all need to be doing right now. Whether you're me trying to share simple advice with business owners, financial advisors, whose businesses have been turned upside down in many ways right now, and who have clients whose lives and businesses um, are, are in flux and are, they're uncertain. Stay safe, choose happiness, help others. I hope this helps you. Um, if I can help you in any way, if you have any questions or thoughts or just want to talk, shoot me an email, rob, R-O-B-B, at EncorePartners.com. Rob, R-O-B-B, at EncorePartners.com. Stay safe.